Hi everyone, my name is Nicolas Borde, and this talk will be about a joint work with Pierre Carman called Fast Verification of Masking Schemes in Characteristic 2. So first, a little bit of context. So we want to make crypto implementations on observable devices, and more specifically, we want to do secure finite field multiplication uh, in presence of leakage. So such operations are often used in the nonlinear components in symmetric crypto, for example, in uh, S-boxes. And in such components, the inputs and outputs are usually secret. And so we want to protect the implementation against uh, an attacker that can observe the device and leak information during the computation that are uh, so-called side channel attacks. To do so, one uh, possible countermeasure is to use masking, which is to split A, B and C into shares using a secret string scheme. For example, we can use uh, an additive one. Here we have uh, the original value x that will be split into uh, d plus 1 shares, the xi, such that the first uh, d shares are taken uniformly at random and the last one, xd, is uh, computed uh, such that the sum of all the shares is equal to x. Then we want to compute the operation so the multiplication over the shared operands to obtain a shared result. And we want to do so while ensuring that uh, no information can be gained on either A, B or C during the computation. Um, so here is the first attempt at doing so for the multiplication. So we define CK as the sum of all the A, K, B, J for all J. Uh, here is the corresponding circuit for uh, for d for yeah for d equal one. Um, the problem here is that uh, any single CK is actually revealing information about b. For example, if c one here is non-zero, then we are sure that b itself is non-zero. So intuitively, this strategy is not secure. And now we will see um, how to modelize this, uh, to formalize this into uh, the probing security model. So first, some quick definitions. So what we call a gadget for a given function f uh, is in fact a, a circuit that is working not on the input of f directly, but on the sharing of the inputs. And this circuit is also outputting the a share um, a shared version of the result. The circuit itself is described as uh, arithmetic gates and also some special gates uh, providing additional uniform random values um, during the computation. Here, this equality is just stating that the circuit is actually computing the right function f on the, on the shared uh, variant. Then, on, uh, on such a gadget, we can have uh, some probes that are just mappings uh, that uh, maps a, a given wire to the value it takes during the execution of the gadget. And so, in uh, 2003, uh, Ishai, Sai, and Wagner uh, introduced the concept of uh, deprivacy. Uh, deprivate is a, a property of uh, a gadget. Uh, so a gadget is said to be deprivate when every set of less than d probes on this gadget is independent, is the distribution of the, these probes are independent from the unmasked values on which the gadget it is evaluated. So in the same paper in 2003, uh, they designed uh, deprivate masking schemes for any d which has quadratic complexity in uh, D, the order of the masking. This complexity uh, is both in terms of uh, the number of sums, the number of products used, but also in the number of additional random masks used during the computation to make sure that the, the, the gadget is secure. Here is an example of uh, such a, a gadget, multiplication gadget, at order D equal 1, uh, so first we have the, the sharing of A and the sharing of B. We make the tensor product between the, these two to obtain all the AIBJ. 
And here we see that R0 is an additional random value that uh, is used to ensure that the circuit is uh, deep private. As output, we have C0, C0, C1, which is a valid sharing of the product of A and B. Here is another uh, multiplication gadget, but this time uh, secure at order d equal 3, so it's uh, 3 private from uh, Bart et al. in 2017. And uh, as before, we are doing first the tensor product, and then we use additional random masks. Here, uh, there are four random masks, uh, R0 to R3, uh, to secure the gadget. We see that the, the complexity of such um, circuit is um, increasing uh, quadratically in the number of um, of the in, in terms of d the order of the masking. The main problem about d privacy is that it is not composable, which means that if we have uh, two d private circuits, then their co their composition is not necessarily d private. So we can't uh, chain the gadget. Um, so in 2016, Bart et al. introduced uh, new composable models that are called uh, non-interference and strong non-interference, and that, that are based on the sim simulatability property. So simulatability uh, is a property of a given set of probes, uh, here P, uh, and so this set of probes is said to be uh, T-simulatable. If for a fixed input sharing uh, of the X, the distribution induced on this set of probes by the additional random masks can be simulated perfectly with the knowledge of, um, of less, than T, uh, share, uh, less than T shares for each input. Okay. So from this uh, simulatability property, um, we have the this non-interference and this strong non-interference. So we say that uh, a gadget is a DNI if and only if uh, any set of utmost D probes is uh, dissimulatable. For the strong non-interference, it's a little bit different um, because we are um, regrouping the, the probes into two sets, one that are on the input on the internal wire of the circuit and uh, some probes that are on the output wires only of the circuit. So we say, we say that uh, a gadget is DSNI if and only if any set of D probes where we have D1 probes on the internal uh, wires and D2 probes on the uh, output wires and this set of probes must be um, D1 simulatable. What is uh, useful with these security models is that first, uh, it imply uh, uh, they they implies uh, they imply uh, D privacy, and also most importantly, under some in independent hypothesis, uh, the composition of a, DS a, a DNI um, gadget with a DSNI one is itself DSNI. So, thanks to this property, this composition, we can um, um, compose different uh, small gadgets in order to create a bigger secure circuit. But now we need to uh, check the security of uh, in the security of uh, a given gadget in this model. For example, if we go back to this uh, circuit, this gadget. We, I said to you that it is uh, D-private, in fact it is also DNI, but to prove that this uh, gadget is DNI uh, in absence of a generic proof, uh, we need to check that for every uh, set of less than D probes, um, this probe is simulatable. The problem is that the number of uh, sets of probes is, uh, is growing exponentially in the number of, um, of uh, wire. So, to check uh, a given gadget, a given masking schemes, uh, when we don't have a generic proof, uh, we want first an easy to check condition for the simulatability of a given set of probes. Uh, and, uh, most, and also, if we want to have gadget over 
uh, F2, we want uh, this easy to check condition to be valid uh, over F2. And then once we have a condition that is easy, easily um, ch checked, we want to efficiently enumerate over all the subset of probes. And to, for this to be efficient also, we want the set of probes uh, to be as small as possible to reduce the exponential, uh, to mitigate the exponential growth of the, of the number of uh, sets of probes. Uh, also, here I, I will talk uh, about DNI, but we also want to check the DSNI property. And uh, also, we we can uh, think of uh, e extending the verification in a, a more hardware-oriented model called the robust spring model. But uh, we will not show here this here, but it is um, written in our article. So um, yeah, so for the easy to check condition first. So in 2017, uh, Belay et al. produced this uh, condition, uh, which applies to um, bilinear probes. So bilinear probes are just uh, probes that can be expressed as the sum of some AIBJ, some AI, some BJ, some uh, additional random masks called uh, RI, plus eventually a constant. Uh, in general, in, in, in the, the masking schemes we are going to look at, all the probes are bilinear, so everything is good. So a set of probes is said to satisfy uh, the, this condition um, if and only if it exists a, a, a linear combination of those probes that can be expressed uh, only as uh, some uh, AIBJ, some AI, some BJ, plus some constant. And so no additional random masks are, are uh, appears in this expression. Additionally, uh, we want that the, the, all the rows of this block matrix are non-zero or all the columns of this block matrix are non-zero. Why we want that? Uh, we want that bec because um, this, w this means that if there is no uh, zero row in this block matrix, it means that the, 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 the linear combination uh, functionally depends on every shares uh, on all the d plus one shares of a here uh, if we don't have any uh, zero column it means that the linear combination functionally depends on the on d plus one shares of b so from this condition we can um, uh, uh, state a, a theorem which mean which state that uh, if a set of probes satisfies the condition, then it is not dissimulatable. So if it is not dissimulatable, then it is an attack against the DNI property. And the the converse is true with the constraint uh, because if the the set of probes is not dissimulatable and the size of the finite field is strictly greater than d plus one, then we are sure that it satisfies the condition. As a, a corollary, uh, if the, 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 the finite field is sufficiently, um, is the size of the, the finite field is uh, sufficiently big, then uh, if no set of less than D probes on C satisfies the condition, then we are sure that it is DNI. So from this corollary, we can um, have an alg a direct algorithm to, to, to to check the DNA property of a given gadget. The problem here is that if you want to, to check a gadgets that work uh, on F2, then uh, this constraint is not met and then uh, we can't use this uh, theorem and corollary. So we are going to um, state a, a slightly different condition that is, uh, it is uh, the same as the previous one, inst but instead of having, um, but instead of saying that uh, all the the rows must be non-zero here, at least L plus one uh, rows must be non-zero, or L plus one uh, columns. 
where L is the number of probe on our set. So we, we take a, a set of, um, of L probes and if we, we can um, uh, we, if we can find a linear combination such that uh, this linear combination does not depend on, on any additional uh, uh, random value R and uh, it depends on uh, it functionally depends on more share than the number of probes in the set then it's said to satisfy condition 12. As before, we can define a theorem and a corollary uh, that state that if we have a set of probes of L probes that satisfy the condition, then it is not L simulatable. And if uh, the set of probes is not D simulatable, then there exists a, a smaller uh, set included in the, the first one that satisfies the condition. And as a corollary, uh, if no set of less than D probes on C satisfies the condition, then it is a DNI. So thanks to this corollary, we can um, design an algorithm that will go over every set of uh, less than D probes, check if it satisfies condition 12, and at the end, if no, one satisf no, no set of probes satisfies the condition, then we have proven the property the DNI property of the gadget. That's what we are going to do. And uh, to do so efficiently, we'll rewrite the condition uh, in terms of weight of indicator matrices, the, the, the matrices that indicate the, the functional dependence on the AIBJ, the AI, the BJ, the additional random uh, RI, etc. And uh, so we will use uh, vectorized instruction uh, during the implementation to compute the, the, the matrices and the weights uh, very efficiently. And also we will use uh, combination gray codes uh, to efficiently enumerate over all the subset of probes. So to go from one subset of probes to the other with the, with the least um, computation uh, possible. At peak performance on a, a single thread and a, a thread at uh, 2.6 gigahertz, we are able to check around uh, 200 million uh, subsets uh, by second. And because we use combination gray codes, uh, we can easily parallelize the, the computation by enumerating different uh, different. Uh, enumerating the space of all the, the subsets of less than D probes uh, in a parallel, parallelized uh, way. So as a result uh, of our contributions, uh, we have uh, a new condition for the DNI and also the DSNI security of a small fields. We are, we are not uh, constrained by the size of the field. Um, we also have a new algorithm uh, to check uh, the DNI and the SNI uh, property that is valid over uh, F2, that is correct over F2. And uh, this algorithm is implemented uh, as a publicly available tool uh, to, to check the, the, the security of gadgets. Um, and this tool uh, improved the verification performance by uh, three orders of magnitude. So for example, for uh, ATSNI verification, uh, with the state-of-the-art uh, tool, it took 13 days on four threads. And with our tool, it took uh, less than uh, 10 minutes on a single thread. With our tool, we were able to verify the, 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 the NI and SNI uh, property of uh, concrete masking schemes uh, up to order D equal 11, where it was previously verified only to uh, order 7 and, and lower. We were also able to disprove a conjecture by Bart et al. on the security of genetic transformation uh, of uh, NI gadgets uh, into SNI gadgets. Uh, in fact, this conjecture is, well, the, 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 the generic transformation is correct until uh, a, a, a given order, uh, above which it is no longer correct. Um, and then uh, we also used our tool to design new masking schemes and to verify the, them straight away. 
And thanks to that, we are able to um, to have a masking teams uh, at order uh, G equals seven, which take 17% uh, less additional random masks. So if you want to read more about it, uh, you can uh, read our article, uh, which uh, full version is available on ePrint. Uh, this version has uh, additional example and figures. And the implementation of uh, our uh, tool is uh, publicly available uh, on my GitHub. So yeah, you can check this out too. Thanks for listening.